Hello and welcome to Painting with Rob Boss. Today we're going to be painting a little personified porcupine person. Uh, we're going to be focusing on texture and pattern for this uh, painting here. I'm painting on watercolor paper today. It's seven and a half inches by 11 inches, but you can use that or a canvas or something a different size, doesn't matter. Uh, I'm also going to be using a pencil to sketch and then temper paint for the painting part. So round up your materials and I'll roll the intro and then we'll get started. Alright, so we're going to start off today by drawing our little porcupine guy. Uh, this little guy's going to have a shirt with a pattern on it. He's going to have a little scarf, and uh, he's going to have a porcupine head. So right now I'm just kind of drawing the outline of his body. Uh, so I'm kind of making a semicircular curve, showing his shoulders here. And now I'm going to add the head on. Uh, the head's going to be a little bit more pointed towards the snout and get a little bit wider. Uh, but it's almost a kind of a circular shape with just a little bit of a, a pooch out, a little bit of a point uh, on the snout side there. Now I'm going to be adding kind of the brow line uh, that goes into the nose here. So the porcupine's got kind of a wide little nose. Um, it's kind of similar to a cat nose, but it's wider. Uh, so something kind of like that. And here's the uh, eyebrow on the other side. Um, so yeah, we've got kind of a shape like this with the nose coming down. And then we're going to have the mouth. Uh, so the mouth kind of comes down from the nose uh, on both sides and has kind of a split lip in the middle. We're going to add a little eye on each side. Kind of looks like a grumpy little blob fish right now, but that'll change. Don't worry. All right, so here I'm going to add in a little chin and uh, kind of move those lips over. And then kind of get the uh, side of the face here. So you can see that goes in uh, underneath the eyebrow there and then comes into comes out into a little cheek there. All right, so I'm going to color in some of the eyeball here. Uh, so we'll have it mostly colored in, and then we'll have a little highlight. We're going to paint it later. Um, so it's not super duper important to color that in, but I'm just going to do it anyway so I can see what it's going to kind of look like. All right, so now I'm going to add the uh, quills coming out. And these are almost like uh, drawing messy hair. Um, so I just kind of make a spiky shape coming out and then bring it back in on the other side. We want it to get uh, thinner towards the base and thick, or thinner towards the tip, sorry, and thicker towards the base. So you don't have to put quills in the exact same place as me. You can put them wherever you want. Uh, this isn't super important for them to all match mine or match my painting exactly in the end. So the way the quills on the porcupine work is uh, on the face here, the texture is much more like regular fur. And then as it moves towards the back of the head, it transitions into kind of longer, bigger quills. Now I'm going to draw in the line of the top of the scarf here and the scarf knot. So the top of the scarf is just kind of a curve, an inverted curve, and then the scarf knot is almost like a circular shape for the knot, and then we have the scarf coming out uh, from the knot. Again, you can make your scarf a little different than mine. Uh, it's not super important that everything in here be exactly like mine. All right, so we've got a basic notion of what this guy's gonna look like now. Now it's time to add in some details. 
I also want to darken my drawing up quite a bit because I'm going to be painting on top of it and I'd like to be able to see the drawing through the paint, uh, at least in the beginning. The idea here is to lay the drawing down and then lay down a thin layer of paint that we can still see the drawing through and then build that paint up slowly until we can no longer see the drawing. And uh, that's the way you use your drawing skills to make your painting better. If you come in with thick paint right away, paint over your drawing, you might as well not have done it. Uh, but if you kind of build it up slowly, you can use that drawing throughout the painting process and it makes it much better. I'm also adding a little bit of shading because I'm going to try to have a little bit of shading to show the uh, form or the, the three-dimensionality of the figure here. All right, so I'm putting shading uh, under the brows there. Usually when we have a light source from above, we've got a little bit of shadow underneath the eyebrows. And I'm adding some smaller kind of uh, quills or fur uh, on the sides of the face here. And we'll have, like I said again, bigger ones in the back. So we got kind of two textures almost here in the face. One that's more of a regular furry texture, and one that's more of a spiny quill texture. And then we're also going to have two opportunities for texture in the clothing, on the scarf and on the shirt. Okay, I'm adding a little shading on the underside of the uh, scarf here. And then kind of trying to figure out where there's going to be some shadow uh, on the ends coming out this direction. It's really important that you practice adding these shadows when you're learning to uh, draw from your imagination uh, because even though it can be tricky at first and you're going to make mistakes, that's a necessary part of the learning process. And uh, seeing your mistakes and recognizing them is really important even though it kind of can be discouraging or upsetting. Uh, what it really is is a sign that you are learning. Um, and making mistakes and identifying them is a crucial step in that process. So now I'm going to start adding some paint. So I've got a palette with just the basic primaries on there as well as some green um, and some black and white. The green is a good color to have because it can be hard to mix uh, with your standard primaries. So a little bit of green gives you a little bit more range of color mixing so it's a good thing to have in there. So you can mix up whatever color you want at this stage. I'm mixing up kind of a minty green. Uh, I'm going to be painting the shirt. But you can paint the shirt whatever color you want. The color I'm mixing is not an important part of the lesson. Now when you lay it on, you want to keep it uh, relatively thin. Or you want to thin it out a little bit. You want to get good coverage. Uh, but you also still want to be able to see uh, the drawing through. So like I said, it's all about uh, kind of building up those layers. Um, now there's not a lot of detail on the shirt, so I can go a little bit thicker because it's not as important that I'd be able to see the drawing through. Uh, but it's going to make things a little bit um, better if I can kind of keep it thin enough to see, uh, make sure I don't lose any of the important details in the drawing I'm looking for. One of the tricky parts here is not running out of paint before you're done because then you have to remix a match or paint the whole thing uh, over, do another layer uh, to unify it. The temper paint's nice though because it remains water soluble so you can mix in a little bit of water and get the paint wet again. Uh, it makes it easier to kind of match colors or if you need to kind of cheat a little bit and stretch the color out if you run out. Now I'm making a slightly darker version of this color by adding a little bit of blue. And I'm going to use that to do the background here. Now I do want this one to be a little bit thinner and washier so that I can see the drawing through. Um, I don't have to worry about being super perfect here, uh, getting the or cutting an exact line around the figure. I'm actually just going to kind of paint uh, the whole background here. And uh, I'm going to paint the quills over the background. So I'm laying down the background layer first, and then I'll paint the quills over. So this way I, can, I don't have to paint around every single quill. I can just paint the whole area and then paint the quills in over, and it makes it a lot easier. So here I'm just adding a little more water to stretch that paint out 
cheat a little bit. It's important to paint your background because it's going to make your painting look a lot more finished than if you don't. Uh, a lot of students early in their art practice will just leave the background empty. Um, but it really is like a huge uh, step you can take to make your painting look more complete and finished. And it's really like one of the easier huge steps you can make. So always, you know, address that background, whether you're drawing or painting or whatever. Um, get some color on there. Uh, make it look complete. You could also make it look interesting um, if you want to go even better than that. But even just a basic flat color um, will improve it. If I wanted to have a white background, I would paint it white. I would not use the white paper because it makes it look intentional and it makes it look finished. All right, we got a couple of different kind of values of blue in there, but that's okay, that'll work. So I'm going to wipe out my mixing well uh, with a paper towel so that I can do a new color here. So here I'm going to mix a little bit of yellow and some white. I'm just trying to make like a light yellow color. This is for the scarf. Again, you can mix any color you'd like. It doesn't need to be the same as mine. You might, while you're painting this, want to think about different color schemes you could use. I'm going more or less kind of by instinct, um, but it might not be a bad idea. So you can see my painting's moving around quite a bit. If you need to, tape yours down. Tape it to a table or tape it to a drawing board. I really should have done that earlier, but I didn't think about it. also seems like, for whatever reason, this one's moving around a lot more than they usually do. Alright, so I got my base tone of yellow down. And you can see the graphite's mixing into the paint a little bit. That's okay, we can use that to our advantage to uh, start building up the shadows already. Uh, you may want to be careful, though, in your lighter areas to avoid the graphite. So now I'm going to mix a brown. And uh, mixing browns can be a little bit tricky. The way I do it, though, is I start by mixing my three primaries together. A little yellow, a little red, a little blue. Uh, you got to be careful about the blue because it can change the color pretty quickly. Um, but I mix those all together, and then I look at the brown I've got. And I ask myself, Rob, what color does this brown need? So if you can identify what color there's too much of, you just add the opposite. So I have a little too much red now, I'm going to add some green. If it got a little too blue, I would add a little bit of yellow and red. So you just kind of think about what is there too much of and add the opposite. Okay, so I'm going to paint in a base color uh, for the porcupine's head here of this brown right here. And then I'm going to mix in some variations uh, to give it texture. So I'm just going to lay that down. And I want to keep it thin enough on this layer that I can still see the drawing. Uh, mine's pretty thick here, you can see. Uh, I could go a little thinner. I probably wouldn't want to go any thicker than this. And if you lay uh, some paint down on there and it's too thick, you can just add a little bit more water to it. You can pull the paint you have. Uh, to other areas and it'll thin it out in the process. You can kind of see it here where I laid down that paint initially it's real thick uh, but the areas I pulled it to it's thinned out quite a bit. And if you need to you can always remove paint with a paper towel. Well not always but as long as it's wet you can. Alright so you can see this is pretty messy. This is not looking like anything. It's really important to understand that your painting is not always going to look like uh, what you want it to. There's phases that it has to go through that, uh, if you don't have experience, might seem wrong. But you're going to see by the end of this that this is going to turn out just fine. All right, so now I'm going to use that same tone of brown here, and I'm going to paint in those quills, or at least some of the quills. We're going to do some different colors, uh, different brown tones uh, for the quills to get that texture. If everything's the same color, we're not going to get any texture. We're not going to get any form. 
So uh, I'm going to start with that base brown. Now for the quills, it's not as super important that I be able to see the drawing through them, so I can go a little thicker at this point. And we're just going to slowly paint all those in. So you can start to see here uh, how we're going to get that texture. We're just going to have a variety of brown tones and kind of lay those quills in. And it's going to give us uh, texture in the end because it's going to contrast the two. So when we're painting, uh, having variation is a key component of texture there. All right, so I'm adding a little bit of uh, black to kind of darken the brown a little bit. You got to be careful when you add black because it can take over super quick. So I'm going to paint in the bottom edge of the nose and the mouth. I'll probably hit the eyes at this point too. So this is where it's important to be able to see my drawing because I want to paint exactly where my drawing is. And it's okay to go thick with this paint because I'm reestablishing the drawing. So we want to be thin with our coloring and then we can go thicker with our uh, drawing strokes. And when I say drawing, I mean shaping the image. So it's a good idea to think about painting as kind of two different um, methods or styles or, or goals. One is to color something, a specific color, and the other is to shape it or form it. And that's what I would refer to more as drawing, even though it's not with a pencil, it's with a paintbrush. All right, so you can see I've laid in the bottom edge of that nose, the mouth, and the eyes. And I think that's the only area I really want the black. I want to try not to rely too much on the black outline of everything. Um, using that really kind of limits your uh, need for shading and uh, using light and shadow. And so we try to avoid it. It also makes things look, you know, kind of... Uh, less experienced uh, than if we kind of avoid that. All right, so here I'm laying on a fairly dark brown tone. Again, I don't want it to be totally black. I want to go a little bit lighter than that, go a little more towards the brown. I'm just kind of defining that uh, side of the nose into that transition into the eyebrow. Now when I'm applying this paint, I'm thinking about the texture I want to get. So I'm not just painting a flat line, I'm kind of making little like furry brush strokes. So when we're painting fur, we want the strokes to kind of mimic the type of fur we're painting. So the fur in the face area here is real short. Uh, so we want kind of short, choppy brush strokes to replicate that. When we transition back into the quill area, those quills are going to be real long. So we're going to be doing kind of longer, uh, smoother strokes. We're also going to be trying to lift the paintbrush at the end so it gets a good point at the end of the stroke. All right, so we've got shadow kind of all the way through the face here on the underside. So we're going to add some of that dark brown to make that shadow. I'm going to define uh, kind of that little curve underneath the eye. That's an important feature there. And then uh, I'm just kind of worried about texture. So you can see uh, the way I'm adding the texture is kind of radiating out from the center almost like rays of light coming out of the sun. So that's the way the fur is going to go. So it's important that my texture, um, well, a lot of times at least, it's important that my texture have the correct direction to it. So I want to think about which direction the fur would be going uh, in each of these areas. So now I'm adding a little bit of that dark brown to the spines. I'm really just going to add a little bit of every color I mix um, to various areas on the face there. So I've got a nice variety of colors at the end.
and it's going to give me a good texture hopefully. Again, just using those short choppy brush strokes. All right, he's starting to look like a porcupine. We're getting there. So this is about where we transition from the short choppy fur uh, into the longer um, fur and then into the quills. And again, I'm still kind of radiating out from that center point uh, where the face is. If I painted the texture going across the forehead, it would look real weird. All right, so you see I've got kind of a dark brown mess here going in the middle. Got a good idea of what I'm working with here. Now I'm going to add some real short uh, strokes in the face just to add a little bit more texture there. There's some on the nose there. I'm not super happy with what's on the nose currently, um, but I'll kind of build it up uh, with some more colors as I mix more. So we're just kind of laying down a base texture. Uh, we can keep adding to it and building on it until we're happy with it. So don't worry if it doesn't look perfect yet. Uh, we're going to keep building on it. I also want to vary the brush size I use. A uh, smaller brush is going to give me uh, more texture because I'm going to be making smaller marks. It's also going to help me make thinner lines. I'm going to switch over to the small brush. I kind of a medium one going uh, before that. Gone a little more purple with this brown here. Just to get some variation and uh, make that texture pop a little bit more. So just adding in kind of some more quills in the back here. And now I'm going to wipe out my well again. All right, now I'm going to grab my big brush here. It makes a little bit of red. The red's starting to dry. It's a little harder to pull. A little bit of yellow. A little bit of blue, a little bit of green because it's looking too red. Like I said, we're moving back towards a brown color here. A little bit of white to lighten it up. So I like to mix my color to the brown I want before I start lightening or darkening it because it's easier to adjust how much of each primary you have in it uh, before you start adding the black and white. When you start adding the black and white, it gets a little more complex. We want to limit the variables uh, when we're mixing paint and work with one at a time. Yeah, so now I'm just trying to get a different tone of brown. What I had earlier, it kind of shifted to too purpley. Uh, so I wanted to clear the palette and start over again. Uh, you could just lighten your brown if you have one that you like. And just put a little dab of white Make a little highlight on each eye. 
That really lifens them up, I think. That's one of the details that really makes a character pop. Alright, so I'm going to add this new brown in there. Make a little more texture. And again, it's not necessarily important to mix all the specific browns that I'm mixing. Uh, you just want to have a variety, and that's where the texture is going to come from. All right, I think that nose is starting to look a little better now. A little down here because it's getting, or it's uh, looking pretty empty in this area texture wise. A little more over here. I also want to build up the paint. I don't want it to stay super thin uh, in most areas. Sometimes you want to keep it super thin in some areas, but uh, generally speaking, uh, for this we want to build it up. So, um, since we're focusing on texture and we've got a subject that has a lot of texture here, we would build it up with uh, a lot of different. Uh, tones and values. I'm kind of reshaping this cheek a little bit. Uh, I'm looking at a reference picture of a actual porcupine and I'm seeing that the, the fur kind of shifts over and curves down right there. So I'm kind of mimicking that texture I see. Now I've got a pretty good buildup of texture here. I'm pretty happy with this head. I'm going to lighten some of this brown. I'm not going to try to lighten all the brown because that would require putting in a lot of white paint and probably mixing a big soupy mess. But if I just mix some white paint into one specific area and just lighten that brown. That way I also keep some uh, more of that kind of medium brown in there just in case I want to add any of that anywhere. So while I think the texture is already pretty good, um, a little bit of lighter brown is going to kind of make it pop a little more i think uh, we also see in the quills here uh, that they get pretty light they're pretty light brown uh, on the actual quill part and then the fur is kind of darker brown so i'm going to just lighten those up a little bit by adding kind of a lighter brown in So you can just keep building up this porcupine, keep building up the texture. Uh, the great thing about opaque paint is you can paint on top of it. So just kind of keep building it up until you like it. Uh, so now I'm mixing an even lighter brown, just adding a little more white to that area. Um, I'm also adding a little bit of yellow. And this is for those quills because the quills are pretty light. And to me it looks like the, the tone is a little more of a yellow brown uh, than kind of a I don't know, I guess I'd call it a neutral brown. Um, it's almost more like a skin tone. I mean, I guess all of these browns are skin tones. I shouldn't be so ethnocentric. All right, so adding a little bit of that light yellow. Or that yellow brown, that light yellow brown. He's starting to look like a porcupine guy fieri. <laughs> All right, so now we got a lot of nice build up in the head. Um, got nice texture. Uh, the thickness level on the paint is good. Um, I think we're pretty well set right there. At this point, I'm going to add um, some patterns to the clothing. So again, on this, you can uh, add whatever color pattern you want. You can change the color you lay on top. You can change the pattern. You don't have to do it the way I'm doing it. Do whatever you want. I'm going to do some dots uh, for the scarf here. And I'm going to do some, like, uh, I don't even know what I'd call it. Like a grid, kind of almost like a plaid on the shirt there. 
So uh, I just mixed a little bit of kind of a low saturation red. Uh, but again, you can do what you want. I would not go too high saturation on anything. Uh, but you can do you. That's fine. Uh, really, we're just worried about establishing a couple of patterns on here. Um, we've already got the texture in the face, so uh, we should be good. I'm just kind of painting these in on the scarf, uh, wherever. I'm trying to kind of think about spacing them out evenly, uh, which may be a little bit tricky. Um, on a fabric, you kind of have to think about, like, how are the folds interacting with the pattern you've got on there. Um, but we don't need to be perfect, you know, so it's not, not super, um, not a super big deal. Nothing we need to stress out over, uh, but try to be mindful of it and, uh, you know, at least think about it and do your best to get things where they should be. So that was like a little uh, more muted than I wanted um, for the shirt pattern. So I'm going to get more of a, a higher saturation red here. Everything's pretty low saturation so far. So I think I can up it a little bit on his shirt pattern. Just a little bit of green to cut that saturation. And I'm just going to do kind of a grid pattern on here uh, at an angle. I'm going to try to keep the lines uh, going this direction real thin. And uh, I've got a filbert brush here. So when I turn it sideways, it's going to make a thin line. And then when I turn it uh, the other direction, it will make a thicker line. So I'm kind of using it sideways, uh, I guess I'd call it right now. And I'm trying to keep the lines as thin as I can. All right. And I'm going to go back the other way. And this time I'm uh, turning it the other way and uh, laying down a nice thick line. The pattern on his shirt doesn't really follow the curves of the fabric very well, but that's okay. It's kind of like uh, sometimes you see in cartoons where they've just got a weird uh, pattern overlay on things. I don't mind. I think it's kind of fun. If you want to try to make your pattern kind of follow the curves of the shirt, you're welcome to do that. That would be very cool. Now I uh, mixed a little bit of kind of a um, low saturation purple shadow color. Uh, to add some shadows onto the scarf here. So usually when I'm uh, painting in a shadow, that's what I use is like a low saturation purple. Uh, almost like a slightly purple gray. You don't want to use black for shadows generally because uh, it gets too dark and it also kind of muds things up. Um, so like a, a real... Um, kind of low saturation purple. I'm just saying the exact same thing over again, but that's okay. Uh, it's important and uh, super useful. I also might want to thin it out a little bit with water. And if I want to try to pull a transition, I can use a little bit of water to do that. So again, by adding these shadows, we don't have to use the big black outlines uh, that we would use if we are making like a cartoon. Uh, a lot of times people will overuse those and it'll make your look or make your work just look a little bit less experienced than if you can actually just add shadows to establish forms in the work. All right, so that's looking pretty good, except we need to add some shadows to 
define the arms and uh, make the sleeves apparent. So again, this is why it's important that I can see my drawing through my paint here. Uh, I can see my drawing. I can see exactly where I added the shadows in there. And I can paint on top of it. And it makes life easy. Alright. I think we're pretty much wrapped up on our porcupine here. So you could do the same thing to make any sort of personified animal you would like to make. Uh, it's pretty simple uh, process, pretty easy to do, and with a little bit of practice, you can get really good at it. You probably uh, set up a little stall at the craft fair and uh, sell your little little critter people. Um, so now you've got a marketable skill. So here's our finished guy, and uh, I hope this was informative, and I hope you had fun, and we will see you next time on Painting with Rob Boss. Goodbye. The boss.